So today we're going to be learning about JavaScript and how it works in Play Canvas. So the first very simple project we're going to do is to make this cube. It's able to move to the right. If it moves too far right, it will come in from the left side. And if it goes too far left, it will come in from the right. Um, it can also go up and then it can turn in the air using the, or it can turn around using the W, A, S, and D keys. So this is our first project, and the point of the project is for us to learn JavaScript. Those of you who are going to go on to use Play Canvas or Unity will need to become familiar with some of these programming languages, because without them, our uh, items will not be movable, and our games will not be scorable. So this is really the language that goes behind all of the games that we generally play. So what I'd like you to do is go to my first project. You probably already created that the first day that you used Play Canvas. And we're going to go ahead and add another scene. So go up here to this tab where it says Manage Scenes and come down here to Add New Scene. I happen to call mine Cube. Obviously, you can call it something else if you prefer. So once you've added the new scene, then you need to put some things in it. So first of all, you need to make a floor. And to make the floor, you would go to adding an entity, and you'll want to add a box. And then when you get the box, you'll want to spread it out. If you can look at the numbers over here, um, for my box, the scale is 20 for the x-axis and 9.8 for the z-axis. And yours doesn't have to be exactly the same. Maybe try 20 and 10 for the x and z. But then my y-axis is very small because I really want this to be a floor, not a box. And so uh, for my y-axis, mine's actually set at negative 0.005. So create this floor. And then you'll also want to create a second box. So use the same entity again. And this time, you're creating this cube. And you can see that my cube um, is changed the position only. Everything else is the same. It has a scale of one. Its position is zero, zero, zero is fine. And then the rotation stays at zero, zero, zero. We'll be changing all of that through code anyway. Now, a lot of you are interested in making your cube and your floor look the way you want. And in order to do that, you need to add a material. So you'll come down here to add asset and click on this. And then you can add a material. And when you add this material, you'll be able to use different components here on the right in order to change the color. So for mine, I wanted to have a green material. And in order to do that, I came down here to these different settings. And I kind of just played with them until I was happy with it. Um, so in my case, I chose for the diffuse color to be green. And I have the emissive color looking black. You can set your opacity, so this will make it a little bit more transparent or see-through if that's what you prefer. Um, so definitely use the diffuse box to pick a color. And you can kind of use some of these other ones to tint your color, give it a metallic surface, something like that. Um, and you'll want to make a second material for your floor. So go ahead and pick out some colors. And you can pause the video for a minute and then come back to it. OK, once you have your materials done, then you need to click up here over in the hierarchy. And you'll click on your cube. And you'll drag the material you want onto this box right here where it says material. If you haven't already, you'll also need to add some different components to your cube. And the components that your cube needs, so you go right here to add component, you're going to need to add collision model which is where you put the material rigid body without that it won't move correctly so add this rigid body and the script part and that is what we're going to be focusing on mainly today but make sure you have all of these other things in order to make it work so just once again looking through here you'll need to add collision make sure it's turned on mine says box 0.5 0.5 0 0.5 you'll need model that's where you put your material. And rigid body. Let's look at the settings for that. We need dynamic for this one, for the cube. Mass of 1. My damping is 0. Angular, 0 0.6. And then all of these x, y, and z values are 1. Friction is 0.5. Restitution is 0.5.
All right, and for the floor, the settings are just a little bit different. We still need the collision. We still need the model. That's where you put your material for the floor. And for the rigid body, this one is static. So that's a little different. The friction is 0.5. Okay, so now that you've done all that, um, you might want to follow me as I create a script. So down here you would say, um, on this place you'd say add asset and then you would choose script and that's going to open up an editor for you. So I called my script forces. You may call it something else, but if you choose to call it something else, you will have to change it to that name every time you see the word forces in my code. So I would suggest highly that you go ahead and use the word forces as the name of your script. That way your code will match my code. I know this part is kind of tedious, but I want to walk through this code with you step by step. So first of all, this original part will be set up by the computer as soon as you write your new code. Whenever you see these double slashes and this kind of light gray text, it's just telling you what section of script you're in right now. That's not code that the computer actually follows. Okay, moving down to the next line. This is code that's called once per entity. So it only calls this once as it opens the script. And so it's just defining a few things. For example, it's defining the torque to be seven and it defining these events of key down and what those mean. So we want the box to move when the keys are down and we want it to stop moving when the keys are up. And as you read through some of the documentation in Play Canvas, you will see different things before putting the key down and holding the key down. So kind of pay attention to that as you go. You can see that this is all color coded. And also you should know that as you type, the computer will start to predict what it thinks you want. And as you see the right words, you can go ahead and use your arrow keys and your enter key to select the right words. Okay, so then the second section is update code called every frame. And if you come down here, this is where the bulk of our programming for this particular movement is going to be. So I just want to explain these to you. I know the temptation would be just to copy and paste this code, but I really would like for you to get used to typing it out just so you know that you understand what it is. If you watched the video earlier, you probably know that all of these statements need to add an um, end in semicolons. That is the way that the code knows that you're moving on to the next command. So all of these are a series of if statements. Obviously the then is just implied. And so here, if the left key is pressed, then inside this curly bracket, we're gonna tell it what happens. And what's going to happen is that this entity will apply the impulse of negative one to the rigid body. So the cube, in this case for the key left, it will move one to the left. You should know that the first value in this set of parentheses is X value, the second one is the Y value, the third one is the Z value. As you can see along this whole code, if you look down with me, you'll notice that they are all set to zero and the Z axis. And so that means that it's not moving forward and back. I would love for someone to copy some of this code and pick some other keys that aren't being used yet and see if you can make your cube move forward and back along with left and right. So this is our left on our right and our up. And you can see that in the case of the up, instead of having it move in the X value, we're having it move in the Y value. Then if you come down here for the A, D, W, and S, these are changing the torque. Um, and that's why you can see that the cube would spin a little bit as those were used. And so again, the X value is first and then the Y value is in the middle and the Z is at the end. So please take the time to pause the video and copy this code. You will need to copy it word for word. It is very picky, it is case sensitive. You will need all of the commas, all of the periods, all of that is really important, okay? Then when you come to the bottom, the next thing is how do we keep the cube on the screen? We don't want it to just fall off and be gone. So if the cube goes off to the right or left, it's going to come back on the other side. And we do this by saying if the position of X is less than nine, then we want it to teleport to this place that is 8.8. .8. If the position of the X is greater than nine, we want it to teleport to the negative 8.8 .8 position. 
And again, I would love for some of you to play with these numbers and see if you can get them to change or move differently as you would like, okay? This is another important function. If the cube gets lost or we don't know where it is, we can push R to reset the whole thing. So that is the cube reset control. Okay, and there's a little bit more script here at the bottom about the forces and the teleport, just defining what all of these functions are. I think it's interesting to play with the values. So this value of torque right here, seven, uh, maybe you could make it five or eight and just see what happens. Um, with this, I don't want you to get discouraged, but just observe and learn. And I am going to post all of this code for you as an attachment in Schoology. But again, I'm really telling you that you will learn more if you go ahead and type it rather than copying and pasting it. I just understand that it's probably a little hard to follow from the video. Hey, thanks for watching. Good luck with your cubes and uh, let me know if you have questions.